Hi everyone! I have a drink to share with you today and uh, so I'll just say it. So the dream I had the impression that I was in a concentration camp. Then the next scene was that I saw people being locked up into a house and the house was locked and then set on fire for the people to be burnt alive. Then I was outside though and the guards were busy doing that and so I was outside and I looked in front of me and that's when I saw the water and it looked like um, it was like man-made like a canal Mm, but it was pretty big, it, it would like a, or maybe it was a river. So anyways, I approached it and my thought was, oh, escape. And I was scared in the dream, like I felt like I was in danger. And when I came close to the water, I turned to my left and that's when I saw the kids. There was a bunch of kids, like a dozen kids, already in the water, holding on to something. And they were about to cross. And, and they were like hiding behind a bush. And then I proceeded, I went into the water and I swam all the way to the end. So I got to the next, you know, to, to the end of it. But then I turned around, I looked and I decided I gotta go save the other people. By then I saw other adults coming and some of them with the kids, and some of them it was their kids. And so I was helping them, and it was easy for me to uh, maneuver. Somehow I could walk easily in the water without uh, having to swim much. And uh, But I could see some of the people were scared because they couldn't swim. So I helped them, and others were helping each other. And uh, then we got to the uh, other side. And like I said, the reason I think it was like a canal, it's because it had a wall. Um, it had a wall when you went into it, and then it had another wall to come out of it. And at the end, I wrote, I had no more strength. And I was like having trouble to get over that wall to get onto land. But the others pulled me out of the water. And that was the end of the dream. So I had this dream on the 21st of November. And I prayed over it. And at first, my first impression was that it must be a rapture dream. Like going to the promised land, you know. Um, um, crossing the water and then um, the Lord started uh, giving me more revelation more knowledge uh, through his word so here in uh, Psalms 144 verse 7 and 8 Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters. From the hand of the foreigner, whose mouth speaks lying words, and whose right hand is a hand of falsehood. So this here, so, okay, first, He's taking us out. Deliver me out of great waters. This also means great troubles or persecution. And there is another verse. Isaiah 43, 2. I wrote it here. When you pass through the water... I will be with you. When you pass through the river, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. 
So, as we go through persecution, guys, well, as we heard on the news all over the world, the uh, a shot in the arm is going to be very soon. And uh, those who don't uh, comply uh, will possibly be, uh, first of all, shunned by everyone. Just like it says in Matthew, uh, is it 24? Yes, Matthew 24. Uh, uh, your brothers, your family will will turn you uh, to the authorities. Um, and because of my name. Um, and yeah, it, this is a, such a, you know, what to do in the face of persecution. Now, the Lord has been preparing me and he wants us to prepare for persecution. First of all, he showed me that all the suffering in my personal life led me to be closer to him and that is that is the side you know when everything's well and we're in our comfort we have wonderful homes and families and everything's going good we don't have the need to call on the lord to, to ask him for for our food and and our jobs and to ask him for protection we don't need we have everything right but here when we suffer this is when we come close in intimate relationship with him. This is when we get to see and know that he is not only, that all of his words are true. That, that like I just read in Isaiah, uh, it was Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, through trouble, he is going to be with us. When we pass through great troubles, the river, impossible things that we think this, as humans, there's no solution for it. But our Lord is the God of the impossible. And the more we trust Him and ask Him and pray, and especially His Word, the more we say it, the more not only it comforts us and gives us peace, but he shows us this narrow way. There's always a way and he's showing us. And even in fire, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now this is uh, in uh, Daniel, is it Daniel 7? It's in the book of Daniel when these three boys refuse to... Um, bowed to Nebuchadnezzar the king and he said oh he was so furious the king he he had a furnace already but he says seven times I put it higher the burn the furnace and when the kids went in Jesus was with them there was a fourth person and they did not burn and their clothes did not smell of burn they came out the only thing that burnt out was the ropes that was um binding them and this particular thing about the fire um the lord had me uh, well through the holy spirit i was led to research um a whole thing about the um the knights what are they called the templars you know in the times of um the great uh, uh what was it the conquistadors the they went from France and Spain and England and they wanted to reconquer Jerusalem, the Crusaders. And at some point, there's uh, a scene, okay, it's the, and they're about to besiege the Antioch, the city called Antioch. And uh, so they went in and by that time, others were attacking them and they were hungry they they had traveled miles they were like they had no more hope and apparently all of them prayed and the one of the priests got a message that the lance of jesus where he that he was pierced with was in that city underneath a certain church 
and they went and they dug and, and this priest, he found it. And this gave everybody hope. It was like a miracle. They needed a miracle. They, God made a miracle and, and they won that battle. Uh, later on, that same priest was accused of falsehood. They said, this is just a little metal thing. It's, it's nothing. How do you know it's the lance? He, he said, you know, I, I had the message. Like, in, I'm not sure. I think an angel came to him. Um, you know, he knew for sure it was the real lance from, because God led him to it. But the authorities didn't believe it. The church didn't believe it. So they set him on fire, guys. They put him in the stakes. Set him up. And he would not burn. He would not burn. And uh, finally, they were so mad, they killed him anyways, the poor guy. Uh, but you know, when things like that happen, and the people that see it, Many souls come to the Lord. Many people that see the impossible happen. They, they just turn and get saved, you know. And so no matter what happens, guys, we will lead many to um, um, salvation just by resisting uh, um, any oppression, um, the video that I been watching, so another one that the Lord led me to is a preacher in Germany, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and his story is amazing. You know, guys, I might leave you a link to that story exactly about um, uh, the preacher and pastor Dietrich. He, um, oh, there's so much to say, guys. I think, uh, I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to stick to, uh, the dream. There's a song also that the Lord gave me. It's by Arcade Fire. Lies. Lies. Uh, it's, it's called something like Rebellion and Lies. And something in, in the lyrics about they're lying to our sons and daughters. And uh, the song, when I read the lyrics, it was... It's what's happening now. It seems like a lot... Of people are lying to us just like it says here in Psalms 144 it continues after he says stretch out your hand from above rescue me and deliver me out of the great waters for the hand of the foreigners whose mouth speaks lying words whose right hand is the right hand of falsehood and deceit, right? Falsehood is, is a deceit. And lying words, there's lying words. And, um, and so, um, praise be to God for He's showing us, He's leading us in this time. He's encouraging us, each and every one of us. I've been greatly encouraged myself with Pastor Dana uh, Coverstone. He has a new channel. F try to find it. It's Dana Coverstone. And his his videos now have like, like if it's from him, it's got like it says Pastor Coverstone. It says the subject. And uh, now he's also, besides sharing dreams, he is doing a, a three-part, four-part series on persecution, and it is so interesting. And it's a little bit like what I'm saying. It's like um, getting to know the martyrs, but more importantly, what God did through them, right? Because, uh, for one, suffering brings us closer to God, the first thing. Like Paul says in the Word, you know, rejoice. I rejoice in suffering because then He could use me and, 
and and we are then more surrendered because we have no choice <laughs> we just say okay god take me because I, I don't know what to do right and take me and use me for your glory and secondly in the middle of persecution God works great signs and wonders. I mean, we have proof of that in the Bible, in um, the whole book of Exodus. Uh, he didn't just deliver the people right away. And that's what I'm thinking with rapture. I mean, it's going to happen, but first, he's got through us to show his mighty power and, and glory um, in the midst of darkness. And uh, so, and so the third, so then, so, okay, so in the middle, the second thing, in the middle of persecution, God works great signs and wonders. And the third, God saves many souls when we resist, when we resist, we the believers, and suffer for his name, even unto death. Now, I know that sounds a little harsh, but guys, among his martyrs, there's many that survived impossible odds. I'm thinking like Dimitru Dudeman. Uh, he's a Romanian that, wow, his testament is like beyond amazing. That's where we see through these stories how God works exactly. And what's our part? And our part is to pray and uh, to, to read the word, of course, and uh, to pray for others and continue and persevere, guys. Persevere we must. And the other story is uh, the Cory mm, Cor Tandem Boom. I can't say her last name. A woman of God who survived this concentration camps. Wow. Um, so let's be encouraged. I'm going to say a little prayer. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you, Father God, for saving us, uh, for showing um, that uh, you are our creator and you are powerful and mighty. And uh, we have nothing to fear. And through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through his precious blood, we can accomplish all things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, strengthens me, as your word declares. Father God, today I'd like to bless everyone that's watching this video. Protect us, Lord. Put around us your firewall of protection and a hedge of protection of your angels. As it says in your word in Job and the firewall of protection, it says in Zechariah. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for all you have done, but especially that you loved us so much that you gave us your only son as a sacrifice, as an atonement for our sins, that we may be redeemed, that we may be born again through God, through the Spirit. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Praise be to God. I want to seal this message with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Talk to you soon, guys. And uh, be encouraged in Christ. I love you very much. But remember, God loves you so much more. Okay. Shalom. Bye.